The Richard Vobes Show is a showcase for some of the world's most unsavory New Age conspiracy fear scammers. We've seen people like Hope and Tivon, who market their range of shungite-based protective pendants, uh, bizarre circles of resin and industrial waste products that really can't protect you from anything. If you buy one of these products, the worst that could happen, I suppose, is that you will be down $200 and you'll have a, a circle of resin that really doesn't do anything. Uh, what about Dave Murphy, who we saw a few weeks ago as well? Dave is promising to cook up what he calls a promissory note, which is a fancy word for an IOU. And he claims that you can use this promissory note to settle any amount of debt that you might have. A an audacious claim, which, if true, would upset the financial system as we know it. Fortunately, it is not true. And if you attempt to buy one of these promissory notes from Dave and use it to pay off your mortgage bill, well, you'll be down a few thousand pounds, and you may also be found liable for criminal fraud, but at least you'll still have your life. Which is more than can be said if you take the advice of this horrible man that Richard Vobes featured on his show quite recently. My guest today is Tom Palladino. He is a scalar energy researcher. He's developed a unique healing technique using scalar energy called scalar light. The kinds of scams that Richard Vobes regularly promotes on his YouTube channel are designed to appeal to people who are truly desperate. Perhaps somebody who is paranoid about the dangers of a nearby 5G transmitter, or maybe uh, somebody who is so knee-deep in debt, somebody who is overwhelmed by the amount of money that they owe to creditors and, and people whom they've borrowed from. That's the sort of person who might go for Dave's scheme. But what about an unfortunate person who has a disease that modern medicine regards as incurable? Perhaps you, you have some kind of crippling chronic condition that just cannot be treated. Well, such a person might be tempted to give their money to a man who claims to be the second coming of Nikola Tesla. My instruments are unique. I'm going to show the audience. I'm working with Tesla Energy and the instrument, as you can see, and that I'm pointing to. This is a scalar energy instrument. Tom Palladino is following in an age-old tradition of American quackery. He's claiming to be the inventor of a remarkable, cunning device which is able to harness and harvest a form of energy which is unknown to mainstream physics, but apparently was known to that Serbian inventor Nikola Tesla, whose genius allegedly was spurned by the mainstream establishment because the kinds of free energy that he was going to invent could have um, upset the economic apple cart. The likes of JP Morgan silenced Tesla in order to keep his inventions forever concealed. Except not concealed from Tom Palladino, because he claims to have rediscovered this energetic principle that was at the heart of Tesla's inventions. And he calls it scalar energy. Could you tell us then what scalar energy is for those of us who are a little uninitiated? Scalar energy is not a thing. That won't surprise you. You won't be surprised to learn that Tom Palladino is talking absolute rubbish when he claims to have been harnessing some kind of scientifically observed radiation. He's not. He's just taking a load of sciencey sounding words and combining them with concepts from esoteric New Age mysticism. And, and what he's got is just a reskinning of an age-old traditional New Age idea. The idea that you can project healing energy. Energy which, for some reason, cannot be ever seen, felt, or detected by any scientific instruments, but one must believe that it is there as an article of faith. That's the kind of energy that Tom's device can produce. But nevertheless, he will need to give some kind of slightly more plausible gloss on this, because he wants people to think that he's a scientist. It's sunlight, oh, right. starlight. It's the yes. initial energy of the universe. This isn't a debunking show, so I'm not going to get sucked into a discussion of how sunlight and starlight are merely the visible portions of a vast 
electromagnetic spectrum that includes radio waves and x-rays and gamma rays and a whole bunch of other things that scientists have catalogued and engineers use for all kinds of important useful applications. What Tom is saying is obviously wrong and any child who has completed high school physics knows it. But that's indicative, firstly, of the kind of contempt that Tom Palladino holds the audience in, that the fact that he is so happy to lie to people in order to uh, sell his services. But also the, the hatred Richard Vobes must have for his audience. What a, what a horrible man he is, that he takes someone like Tom Palladino and puts Tom on the Vobes channel. Because Vobes is all about extracting money from gullible nitwits. That's what's going on here. Don't, don't even think about trying to debunk this nonsense because it comes pre-debunked. There's, there's nothing left to debunk. It's all nonsense already. Let's just watch the scam unfold. Scalar energy is everywhere. It's emitted by the sun and the stars. Every inch of the universe has this energy. You simply tap into it. Now imagine that free energy that's omnipresent this is the future of energy generation. This is how we know that Tom and Richard are engaged in a scam. Tom just claimed to have invented a free energy machine. And Richard just smirked smugly and nodded along to this completely ridiculous claim. They're a tag team. They're in it together. Richard is the... I know, he's the, he's the everyman, and it's his job to reflect the awe and wonder of a, of a complete imbecile. And, and it's Tom's job to keep dangling that uh, carrot on a stick, the, the, the possibility that there might be free energy, or, or better still, a, an escape from an incurable disease. And he is going to invoke one of the, the elder gods of New Age conspiracy mysticism in order to achieve that. None other than Nikola Tesla. The great inventor Nikola Tesla developed scalar energy instruments that could capture sunlight. And that's what this instrument is. It's a miniature star. It's safe to conclude that the apparatus on Tom Palladino's workbench there is pure garbage. It doesn't do anything. It is non-functional. It's just a movie set prop. It's like something you might have seen in a 1950s horror film intended to evoke the, the sense and spirit of a mad scientist's laboratory. But there is probably one component that actually has a function, and that's the bit that he seems to show in literally every single one of his demonstrations. Anytime he does a podcast, an appearance, or a Zoom call, he always does this. It's a Tesla coil that's broadcasting the scalar energy. If I were to hold up a light bulb to the yeah. coil, the light bulb would illuminate under the influence of scalar energy. Yeah. The, ener the energy is so powerful, it can illuminate a light bulb placed in its vicinity. This isn't a demonstration of some long lost esoteric principle that was discovered by Nikola Tesla and then magically suppressed by JP Morgan and his capitalist goons. This is just what happens when you bring a CFL bulb in close proximity to a coil that has been energized with an alternating current. It happens every time, and you probably saw that demo in high school physics. Uh, but that, that's really all Tom Palladino has got. And he's counting on the fact that Richard Vobes' audience is so ignorant, so unaware of the, the most basic aspects of how these things work, that they will find that sufficiently convincing, because the next part of his presentation is where it goes really quite sinister. He's gone from establishing his credentials as this Tesla-inspired scientist to explaining what he's going to do to um, heal your incurable disease. When I hmm. work with photographs, I access a person's aura, or perhaps my, some people might want to call it their zero-point energy field. If I place these two photographs inside my instrument, side by side, there's a communication of this fungus with my photograph. And I can eradicate the energy of Candida albicans through the photograph. This is obviously magical thinking. 
Tom Palladino has dreamt up this rather theatrical idea to impress people who are clearly nitwits with absolutely zero understanding of how anything works. The notion that you could place a photo of a man next to a photo of a yeast infection and then crank this machine on and, and somehow that will cause all of the yeast particles in the man's body to, to disintegrate. Uh, an interesting idea. Imagine though, if instead of placing a picture of the, the yeast cells, we placed some pictures of Tom Palladino's brain cells and then we switched the machine on. Would that cause the sudden destruction of every brain cell in Tom Palladino's head? And if that were to happen, what difference would it make? Well, Nikola Tesla did not answer that question, and so I couldn't possibly say. So this is a collection of the herpes viruses. And nice. I would literally take a person's photograph and place it in the instrument side by side those photographs of herpes. Or I would take photographs of a thousand people. So according to Tom Palladino, there is no minimum resolution requirement for these photos that you place into the device. You could have a, a photo no matter how small and a, a viral picture no matter how big. It just doesn't matter. The machine works anyway. So if that were the case, then why hasn't Tom Palladino placed a, a picture of, of a truly dangerous virus next to a picture of the entire continental United States of America. And in one moment, one activation of his machine, he would have wiped out a, an entire virus from an entire continent. Something truly difficult, something truly dangerous. Oh, what about HIV? I'm gonna hold up a photograph. This is a group in Delhi, India. It's known as the Om Prakash HIV AIDS Clinic. After I work with these people, they report to me that they no longer have a viral load for HIV. Tom would like us to believe that uh, the alleged reduction in viral count found in, in samples from these uh, people from, from a hospital in New Delhi, India, has nothing at all to do with the, the cocktail of antiretrovirals and, and modern antiviral therapies they may have been receiving, and everything to do with the fact that uh, he placed their photo, along with a photo of the AIDS virus, HIV, into his machine and then switched his machine on. He believes himself to be responsible for their healing. Which is, I mean, it's a, it's a bizarre claim to make because there is no cure for AIDS. There's no way that once infected, you can be entirely free of the virus. There are very good treatments that, that might prolong somebody who has an HIV infection's life almost indefinitely. But what he's saying is impossible. And not only is it impossible, but it's, it's cruel because he's offering a false hope. It's worse than that, because somebody who believes in Tom Palladino's healing techniques might squander their limited amount of money on his alleged technology instead of the, the mainstream medical intervention that has been shown to be so effective. That Tom Palladino is stealing a chance of life from these people, if indeed these people actually exist and anything that he's saying is true, because he's a, a liar and a charlatan and a horrible evil man, even for, for dangling this false hope in front of anybody's face. Right. Here's a, here's a PCR test from a woman who once had herpes, and after our session, she had a follow-up PCR test. There's no viral load. Tom Palladino is taking credit for an achievement that almost certainly had nothing to do with him. The idea that a woman who once had a herpes infection, but later was shown to be entirely clear of the infection with a PCR test, which is maybe not the best way of, of determining whether somebody was entirely rid of a virus, especially in the case of herpes, which is a virus that is known to become dormant within the human body. If you have chickenpox aged six years old, you might find yourself with shingles age 60. And that's not because you've been reinfected, it's because the virus is able to conceal itself inside certain cells in our bodies and become virtually undetectable. He's picked a particularly stupid example. And is that because 
he's ignorant or is he playing on his audience's ignorance? Uh, I perhaps choose the latter because he's playing this bizarre game where he's redefining scientific words to mean exactly what he wants them to mean. And that could only impress somebody who was very, very stupid. This photograph of riboflavin has, if you will, a specific energy or a signature, let's call it a force field. And when you share, when two force fields communicate, this is how I receive my multivitamins. Tom Palladino no longer needs multivitamin supplements because he takes a picture of that um, riboflavin. It, it actually just looks like a bunch of splodges to me, but he puts that into his machine alongside a picture of himself and he uploads the vitamins into his body, which, which makes me wonder, why does he even need air and food when you could presumably just upload oxygen molecules the same way? What, what about a, a picture of a McDonald's Happy Meal? You, you could simply upload that into your stomach and then you wouldn't need to go to the drive through uh, Well, Tom Palladino hasn't actually explained the limitations of uh, his device. And, and while we're pondering that, we might also ponder this irresistible offer that he makes to all of his potential customers. To prove my work, I offer everybody in the world 15 days of free sessions. Go to the website, simply email us your photograph, just your facial, just the bus shot, and we'll treat you for 15 days. Uh, I, I give away 15 days of free sessions. Now, I'm all about results. I am a scientist. Tom has cleverly constructed this scam, so he can't actually lose. Well, un unless the patient dies. But if you didn't die, after 15 days, Tom Palladino will claim that your lack of death was entirely attributed to the success of his remote healing intervention. It was the Tesla energies that poured forth from his magic throbbing coil that cured your candida infection, that uh, mollified the, the HIV particles that are coursing through your veins even now. If you had herpes before but you don't have herpes now, Tom will also claim the success. And, and the one thing you can't do is cancel that payment because your life now depends on the ongoing treatment from Tom Palladino and his bizarre Tesla-inspired machine. Uh, and you'll be thrilled to learn that this doesn't just work on humans. Send photographs of your pets. Invariably, you'll see an improvement in the health of your dogs, your cats, your, your horses, etc. So whatever kind of life form is afflicted, whether it be a human being, a, a horse, a cow, a pig, a donkey, your son's pet cat or dog, a, a guinea pig, a gerbil, or even a goldfish, whatever the afflicted animal is, please just send a picture of that creature to Tom Palladino, and he will work his magic from his office without even leaving his home. He will place that photo along with the photos of countless others, along with images of pathogens, viruses, yeast infections, and, and possibly a, a dagger that might hurt somebody, and he will remove the harmful energy from all of the people whose photos he's sent. Uh, and if for some reason that doesn't work, if your goldfish dies between one session and the next, please don't blame Tom Palladino, because he doesn't make any kind of warranty of success. He admits that his service has not been verified by any independent authorities. Why do I have to rely upon testimonies? No scientific group has ever duplicated my results. Tom is claiming this like it's a good thing, like he genuinely believes that the reason why nobody has taken the slightest bit of interest in his claims, that not one scientist has ever bothered to, to investigate what he is claiming to be true, it is because he's peerless, because he's so far out ahead of everybody else in this field that nobody is qualified to assess his claims. It's, it's not that everybody immediately recognises him uh, as a crank and a charlatan and a liar. In fact, the only sort of person who might give him an audience is somebody who is 
just as much of a charlatan. Somebody like Richard Vobes, in fact, who makes his living by promoting the dishonest works of charlatans. This instrument is unique. My process is unique. I have no peers. There are no peer-reviewed papers, hence. There are no peer-reviewed studies. What I'm doing is that cutting edge. If you're wondering what this remarkable patent remedy costs, how much does it cost to be remotely healed by Tom Palladino and his Tesla Starlight device? Well, once that 15-day free trial runs out, you'll be paying £147 per month. That's a recurring fee. Or, if you prefer, £975 per year. Uh, strangely, you can pay uh, the exact same number of US dollars. So, if you want to save approximately 30%, pay in dollars and not pounds. That's a, a top tip that you got from Mind of Steel. Uh, a better tip, of course, would be not to, to pay any money at all. Perhaps what we should all do right now is report Richard Vobes and Tom Palladino to YouTube. Perhaps if enough of us make a report that um, Tom and Richard are promoting obvious medical misinformation on their channel, which is a complete and obvious abuse of YouTube's terms, maybe they'll, they'll take notice. Maybe if enough of us pile onto that complaint form, YouTube's algorithm will eventually detect that, that what we are seeing here is a, is a scam. It, it's, a, it's an obvious scam perpetrated by two truly terrible people with the intent of depriving people first of their wealth and then ultimately of their life, because that is what's going to happen. People are going to pay Tom Palladino instead of buying the treatment they actually need in order to survive. That's why they are both absolutely horrible people, worthy of our scorn and derision. Uh, I, you know what? I'm absolutely sick to death of thinking of people like this. I, I don't know how I'm going to come up with something more horrible to show you next week, but I know what I'm going to have to do to find it. And that's really simple. I will just watch the Richard Vobes show, and I'm sure he will produce something that, that, that makes, makes even this look like um, an innocent pastime. Because Richard Vobes is nothing but an innovator. He has astonishing ways of appalling even me. And I am a man who spends most of my life watching ridiculous conspiracy theories. So, until then, I will be watching him so you don't have to.